basic items such as food. And we've had even recently had an increase in the price of oil and oil products such as gasoline and distillates, which are used for diesel and, and aircraft fuel. <clears throat> and uh, it's no wonder the airlines can't make any money. But it's all there. And, of course, unfortunately, our government from some years uh, has not been telling the truth about the inflation figures. And so we are going to enter into a higher inflationary environment. And what's going to make that happen is that the Federal Reserve is a private corporation owned by the 12 Federal Reserve banks. And they make monetary policy for the United States. They, unlike any other central bank, are able to create money out of thin air. And what has happened is that when you make money up out of thin air and it goes into the economy, they call it monetizing the money. In other, in other words, it's like lighting a fuse. And when the fuse burns and it explodes, the money power, the credit power within the economy explodes, actually. Now, what they've done is they have these TARP programs and uh, TARP pro programs and, and other such giveaways to companies like AIG, uh, where they supposedly loaned $1.054 billion. And uh, come to find out, uh, the money didn't go to AIG. The money went to the banks who had derivative, which are kind of insurance-like policies, if you want to call them that. They lent them the money to pay off the people who AIG could not pay off because when AIG wrote the contracts, they didn't have collateralization for the contracts. They went naked. And so when AIG went under, was taken over by government, what happened was that these creditors are saying, we want our $105.4 billion. And they got it. You and I and everybody else out there who's an American citizen paid for that. So what a government is doing and what the Fed is doing is paying for, uh, debts to domestic and foreign corporations that were created by professional speculators, better known as gamblers. Now, the U.S. Treasury has requested that the Federal Reserve do some things for them. Number one, they want them to buy $300 billion worth of U.S. Treasuries either in the market or directly from the Treasury. And they've been doing that for the past several months. And by the end of the fiscal year, which is September the 30th of this year, they will have completed that. In fact, they may even do more than that. In fact, it's my guess that figure will triple to $900 billion. They are also in the market buying agency securities, which are bonds from Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, FHA, Sally Mae, these government guaranteed entities of which two, Fannie and Freddie, now belong to the government, which is the American people. And they had to do that because they were bankrupt. And incidentally, we announced their bankruptcy five years ago. They were already bankrupt, and everybody in the Beltway knew it. And so they're buying their bonds. They're also buying bonds called collateralized debt obligations from banks. Now, they won't tell us what they're paying for them. It's very important because, you know, we're going to end up with the bill. And their average, the average CDO, as they're called, is worth about 25 or 30 cents on the dollar. 
In other words, they're toxic garbage <clears throat> in the parlance of Wall Street. And so the Fed is buying those. And so between the CDOs, the agencies, and the treasuries, we know already that they will buy $2 trillion worth of those securities prior to September the 30th. All the money used to do that is made up out of thin air. It's a bookkeeping entry. Now, the money that goes into the market to buy the treasuries and the agencies, or if they buy treasuries from the treasury, that immediately becomes monetized, creates inflation. And at the same time, they're increasing money and credit by about 18%. So that is smothering still the, the, um, the deflation, the deflation that's in process. Now, the money that's going to the banks for the purchase of those CDOs is either gone to buy treasuries or it's gone on deposit with the Fed Reserve for which they see receive interest. So essentially what the Fed's doing is giving money away to the banks. The Once the banks start lending that money, and they will in time, they're going to have to, that's when the real hyperinflation starts. And I can't give you a date on that, but it is going to happen. And so when Drew talks about hyperinflation, it's an evolutionary process. Uh, good examples in the past have been in Argentina in the early 90s. They defaulted on that currency. Or during the Weimar Republic in Germany during the 1920s, uh, we had uh, the Treaty of Versailles which forced Germany to pay reparations, money for losing the war, to the Allies who fought the war against Germany. And during that period of time, into the 1920s, Germany was not able to repay. So they just kept on printing money. And so that's how the hyperinflation in the Weimar Republic came about. And that's why people get paid two or three times a day, and the wife would come to the factory and grab the money and run down to the grocer uh, to buy what they had to buy for the, the house. And the grocer would run down to the bank to get rid of the money. And it got so bad that uh, uh, the wheelbarrow that they came to collect the money in uh, was worth more than the money that was in the wheelbarrow. But it was a classic and is used as a classic in hyperinflation. So eventually probably within six months to a year, year and a half. In that time period, we will see real hyperinflation. What is that? Uh, it could be 18 to 20 percent. It could be 45 to 50 percent. We just don't know. We don't know what form it's going to take, but it's not going to be good. And at the end of that hyperinflationary period, when nobody will borrow money anymore because of the seriousness of the situation, then we'll get deflation big time. And it'll make the 1930s look like a walk on the park. And so that is what inflation and hyperinflation are really all about. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, here in, uh, in South Texas, uh, in our reserve unit, we have been uh, advised that uh, the oil prices are going back down in barrel cost, and uh, some of the guys that are on reserve, our two-week training reserve units, are asking questions why why the the oil, oil prices have gone up so far. Is it because of the, the uh, speculation by people that are just moving uh, uh, stocks, uh, or is it really uh, uh, the demand that uh, is requiring this? Well, I don't think it's the demand, but we also have to look at the production side. And so I don't know, uh, I do know, I do know that usage has fallen. And it's, depending upon the month you look at, it's down anywhere between 1% and 3%. We'll say 
for the sake of argument, 1.5%. But at the other hand, the major oil producers have cut back on production because they don't want oil at 15 or $20 a barrel. And I can't blame them. I mean, it's a non-renewable resource, and they should be paid a, paid a fair price. And 10 or $15 a barrel under today's circumstances is not a fair price. Uh, whether uh, $66 a barrel, where oil closed today, is a fair price remains to be seen. 